What makes the battle great? Is it who won, the number of casualties, strategic advantage? The Battle of Pea Ridge is not well known outside of the Northwest Arkansas area. What would have made it have a significant place in history? To the Confederates, this battle was the chance to change the path of the war and make the odds in their favor. However, this is not what happened. For weeks, Union forces have been driving the Confederate Army out of Missouri and into Northwest Arkansas. Eventually, the two factions met in what would be one of the biggest battles west of the Mississippi River. The South had everything to gain from the Pea Ridge Battle and everything to lose. The Confederate goal was to defeat Samuel Curtis's Union Army. It was the only thing standing in the way of the Confederate forces occupying the Missouri city of St. Louis. They wanted to take control of the Mississippi River and the state of Missouri. Missouri was a interesting state because it had the Mississippi River that was running down one side of it, which was a main vein through the whole United States. And whoever controls the Mississippi could control the West. Also, Missouri was going to be needed, um, particularly for Western expansion. If they didn't have Missouri, um, the Confederates, it would be a lot harder to expand their nation after the war ended if they had won than if they did have it. I mean, they had Texas, but you're not going to be able to expand too far without Missouri because they already had Arkansas so they could have gone further west. Also, the Confederates believed at the time that there was a lot of um, good supplies in St. Louis at the arsenal there. Unfortunately, what they didn't take into consideration was the Union Army had just come out of St. Louis and all of those supplies had been basically brought down because that Union Army had those supplies with them. St. Louis was the key to winning the war. But what could go wrong, did. Their ammunition was late, their generals were scattered, and their armies exhausted. They lost the battle at Pea Ridge, which led to the loss of the campaign, and as an effect, the entire Civil War. The Union forces had been chasing the Confederate armies west for two weeks. Both forces met at Pea Ridge, a small town in Northwest Arkansas. Samuel R. Curtis, commander of the Union Army, and Confederate General Earl Van Dorm set up their camps and discussed their plan to attack. The Confederates believed that Curtis's army was the most important thing standing in the way of capturing St. Louis. With St. Louis under Confederate control, they would also have control of the Mississippi River and have a good chance of capturing the entire state of Missouri. If they had succeeded, they could have drastically changed the outcome of the war. However, their greatest failure in this battle was the lack of communication among generals. Samuel Curtis, who was in charge of the Union troops, he was their general. He knew how many pairs of socks his generals had. That's how much he knew about his soldiers. He knew what their limits were. He knew how much they had rested, how much sleep they had. He was well prepared in all of their supplies, ammunition, food, and he was also doing what he could to get more of those supplies while he was in the area. He was well prepared and organized, and that was one of his biggest things that he could have done right here. On the first day of the battle, Van Dorn planned for his generals to both reach Cross Timbers Hollow by dawn. But when dawn came, only the head of Price's division had made it. Nicola was then told to meet Price at Elkhorn, but the Union Army found out about their plans. Curtis sent a portion of his army to join together at Elkhorn as well. The first shots of the battle were fired in a small village called Lee Town. Here, McCullough attacked the Union Army. The small village was devastated. Debris was scattered everywhere, and many houses there were taken for hospitals. After Leetown, Price was injured, but still had control of the left wing of his army, while Van Dorn took control of the right. Night fell upon the war-stricken fields. Despite enduring harsh winter conditions and against the advisory of other generals, neither of the two forces retreated. The troops continued to march through the night. The second day came, and by 8 a.m., the Union had 21 cannons in an open field just west of Elkhorn. Only 12 Confederate cannons fought back. Their counterattack was ineffective against the Union's artillery. Around 9.30 a.m., Van Dorn realized that his army was running low on artillery ammunition. All the reserves were on a wagon train. To get to it, the Confederate forces would have to march nearly six hours to the wagon train, and then six hours to get back to their previous positions. This was when Van Dorn realized that his stand against the Union would likely end in failure. He decided to retreat. The battle was over by noon on the second day, when the Union soldiers celebrated their victory around Elkhorn Tavern. Due to the Confederates' generals being scattered, their side was chaos. Although the Union forces were outnumbered over two to three, they were much more organized than the Confederates. This was one of the main factors that led to the Union victory at Pea Ridge. 
Had the Confederates been more organized, their ammunition could have been with their troops so that they would not have to retreat. The Battle of Pea Ridge had the potential to be a very pivotal battle in the Civil War. There, Confederates took a stand for what they believed in. Although their stand failed, they were willing to sacrifice their lives in order to gain Missouri and the Mississippi River for the South. Due to lack of organization, a great battle turned into a great defeat for the Confederacy. The battle was a blunder for them that is now rarely known outside of local areas.